Hi all! Welcome to my channel, my name is Greta and I make PSL lyric videos, side-by-side -side tutorials and chronic illness related content. Today I want to talk about a horrible experience I had at my graduation which I had to attend with my wheelchair. I'm an ambulatory wheelchair user which means that I don't always need a wheelchair because my conditions are quite fluctuating. Sometimes I need it for the same tasks that I could do the day before without it. Prior to getting a wheelchair, I binged a lot of YouTube videos, as you can imagine. And one that really stuck with me was by Jam from Wheels No Heels, where she listed 10 reasons why you shouldn't touch someone's wheelchair or mobility aid. And I was shocked. I knew it happened to her and to all those other people who reacted to it, but I just couldn't really, I couldn't understand what would drive another person to not just touch, but push or move someone else's mobility aid. And as I don't leave the house on my own, I'm normally with my husband, who's also my carer, or with other people that I love, trust, and they know about my condition. So I thought, it wouldn't happen because why would you do it especially if there are people around them but the truth is i was terribly wrong it happened on my university graduation which i attended with nine other people so i wasn't alone i was never left alone and it, it, it was scary i felt i felt violated and vulnerable and exposed and and one of the worst things about it all was that I can only assume that those two people who did that within five minutes of each other let me add they probably went home thinking that they did this amazing act by helping a disabled person and that is why I'm sharing this with you so whether you're not a wheelchair user, you would understand what it feels like if it hasn't happened to you or if you know someone in a wheelchair or just if you want to be a decent human and not patronise people who are very capable of doing many things themselves. Anyhow, before jumping into the nitty gritty details, I just want to paint a picture as it was like no other and not necessarily in the good way. Imagine cramming three years worth of graduates into three days of events and it is more chaotic than you would imagine at first. So we could collect the gowns from the city hall, which was relatively accessible, and we went at a time when it wasn't too busy. And then every school had their own school appreciation event, where you would walk or roll across the stage to receive an empty paper, I believe, because they stopped doing paper degrees for people from the UK due to compromised immunity, we decided not to go there because it was in the peak of the summer COVID cases. Also, we didn't go to the graduation show at the Principality Stadium later that night. What we did want to go to and what we pre-booked tickets for, however, was the graduation gardens. In the description, it was really lovely. Prosecco or other sparkling drinks and strawberry on the lawn outside of the main building. And you can catch up with friends and professors and lecturers and all that. So it sounded really lovely and it was outdoors, so perfect. However, it was, it was nothing like it as far as we experienced. Once we got in, they just literally shoved a glass of something in your hands and when you are using a wheelchair, it is incredibly hard to balance anything in a crowd, to be honest. And I was already getting a wee bit stressed. And then we started going to our bit because they separated it by schools and we were with the School of Biosciences so I think we had to go to Area A. So we tried to make our way and 
from a wheelchair it wasn't just hot and busy but it was really scary <laughs> all i could see was bots bots everywhere and people were really inconsiderate like there were some who tried to make way or oh sorry we're in the way but then others would just slide in using the opportunity so that they could get ahead even though they did see me right there I was using all my mindfulness techniques that I learned in CBT for social anxiety but it was just way too much so I signaled to Will, my husband, that we need to go. So we tried to get out and then we hit a curb. If you're a wheelchair user, you simply just can't avoid learning how to get up a curb, alright? So, however, I was stressed, hot, starting to get a bit foggy as well. So, I could only get my front wheels up at my third try. What I found is that once my front wheels are up, it's a piece of cake. So, I was just reaching back to ooh, get up with my back wheels when someone with a, there you go, pushed me up. And I was just, I was just really shocked and I didn't know what to say in the moment and neither could anyone around me. And by the time I realised what happened, they were gone. All I knew is, is I had to get out of there as soon as possible. So I started going when I could feel someone pushing me and when you use wheelchair regularly you kind of feel like it's it's part of you it's really weird to explain but it's like an extension of your own body and i could feel like oh someone someone's pushing me at first i thought it was my brother because he's been helping me out in the previous days that were really really hot and you know maybe he just forgot about letting me know because you shouldn't push someone without letting them know because the wheelchair user's hands can easily get caught and Inja break, slice off our fingers. Anyway, so I look back up to see what happened. And there was this complete stranger behind me. And what was even worse is that I looked around and I couldn't recognize anyone. I think, I think they might have been with the university because they were wearing a lanyard that was like that color, but to be honest, I had better things to focus on, like not being kidnapped. So I was like, you stop, stop, stop. And I, I want to be naive and think he didn't hear. But I was turning around and saying, stop, stop, stop. And I remember trying to reach for it. But as I say, you don't want to reach in and accidentally get it caught because it's bloody painful. I actually cannot recall how we got to a hold maybe i maybe i pulled the brakes in or maybe i honestly don't know because it kind of just cut out the next thing i do remember was being surrounded by the nine people i was meant to be there with they were shocked that they just started pushing me off rather fast and at first they didn't know what was happening and then they tried to catch up with me maybe they were the ones who told them to stop i don't know honestly and i remember looking around it was all you know finally familiar faces i was like in my head i was like it's okay it's okay it's okay we can cry about this later we can cry about this later you're okay you can see well you can see your parents and everything like that. I was trying my best not to panic. I was like, <laughs> yeah, cool, 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 cool. I wasn't actually saying anything out loud. That was just in my hand because I thought if I tried to speak, I would just burst out in tears. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't wrong because my my mom asked like, "Are you alright?" The full on ugly crying just started like that like proper blobfish ugly crying i'm talking about it's hard to explain like when i was watching those videos i was trying to imagine like oh my god that must be horrible obviously 
but you don't know how it feels until you're in the situation, until it happens to you. I felt like, I don't know, like as if I was dehumanized or I don't know what, the, what, I don't know what those people thought. I mean, I know they thought they were helping, but and when I told them to stop, they just didn't. And it was really, really, I can only use the word scary. And I have been writing a script to get all the emotions. Out. I already cried about this yesterday. But it's still, I still have that knot in my stomach and it just, I feel that anxiety again and it's just, I feel like it's more of a matter of when rather than if it will happen next. I'm not saying you shouldn't help if you see someone struggling, but ask first and wait for the answer. It's not just the emotional trauma part that you should be concerned about. It's, as I mentioned before, you could actually seriously injure someone because you're being inconsiderate. Just ask and wait for the answer. That would solve so many issues. Please, I think it's really important to get stories like this out there so that maybe if it reaches more people, they will think twice before doing anything like this. I really fear that it will happen again and I really fear that it will happen to someone else as well. Are you a wheelchair user? Has it happened to you? What's your story of the first time it happened? I just want you to know that you can leave it in the comments below and I will read it and reply and we can talk about it together. And whether or not you're a wheelchair user or a family member of one, it would mean a lot to me if you would share this video with your friends and family to stop people thinking they are helping us disabled folk. If you have any questions, comments or concerns regarding this video, this topic or anything else related, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below or you can also find me on Twitter and on Instagram. Please subscribe to my channel so that you can keep up to date with content arriving. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye bye.